Hey gang, here we go. This is the protocols, protocols 101. Now before we start, um, just kind of important to say that um, really highly recommend you check out previous videos just so you get an understanding of the background and the reason why we do some of the things we do will become uh, self-explanatory. Um, I'll have to do a couple of things for background, just for background's sake. But uh, I want to say, first of all, this first example is uh, not going to be about human-initiated contact. The protocols are very dynamic. They're essentially a flowchart of actions and reactions to take based on the previous action. And um, so uh, they're very dynamic, and uh, they can be used with technology and without technology. Um, technology can provide all sorts of really cool options um, for the protocols, but um, we'll get into human-initiated uh, contact in another video. But really quickly, um, uh, as background, <clears throat> just want to state the obvious that everything in the universe, uh, all energy and all matter is information. And information cannot exist in and of itself just alone. Information needs consciousness to bring information into reality to actualize information into matter or energy. So, thus, information is the most valuable thing in the universe. It's an incredibly valuable commodity. Information is more valuable than diamonds or gold. And life forms are a rich source of information. So, when a life form gets advanced enough to travel the universe, its main goal is for information, as ours would be if we traveled um, space. So, um, extra advanced civilizations send out probes, and uh, there's, like our planet has a lot of species, our universe has a lot of species. And so they send out emissaries, these highly intelligent probes that are so intelligent, they basically become second generation life forms, meaning they have become sentient. They are so intelligent that they are alive. So for references of the protocols, we're going to consider ships, and extraterrestrials, the same thing, because the reactions to uh, both of them in many ways is going to be the same. So, um, just uh, having stated all of that, uh, it's important to say that uh, these extraterrestrial probes and crafts um, have discovered the Earth and have a series of protocols that they will follow um, when encountering us and encountering the different conditions on Earth. So, um, let's just start, let's just dive right in. Let's take the example of this situation. That an extraterrestrial craft has made its presence known by flying in to a position and staying there. And this position is relatively close to a human being, and let's call her Eva. Um, now, this is not a sighting where it's incredibly far away, but a lot of the protocols can still um, work for that. Or the extraterrestrial has made its presence close to a, a, a helicopter. Hopefully that helicopter has an extraterrestrial protocol pod on it. Or a jet fighter, and uh, hopefully it also has a pod on it. But if not, we'll address the different situations with all of them. Uh, really quickly right now, we're going to put a little mm, no sign over the jet. And we'll get to that in just a, re a second. Now, um, before we go any further, um, let's just kind of pause for a moment. If uh, an extraterrestrial craft uh, became present in front of you, what do you think the most passive response to that would be? Um, some people might say collapse, but uh, that would probably be perceived as maybe <laughs> you dying or something like that. But uh, the, how the protocols work is they dictate that the person should retreat around 10 feet and descend, get down on a knee. It doesn't have to be in two separate motions, it can be in one continual motion, so it can be descending and backing up and coming down to one knee. The same thing is true with a helicopter. It is to reverse and descend, or it can be 
both at the same time and then come to a position and hold. With a jet fighter, it's not as ideal uh, unless you have a Harrier jet. But as you can tell, uh, the, to, go, to reverse, you have to kind of do a snake uh, position like this, kind of pattern, excuse me, and descend. Because the last thing you want to do, you do not want to do this, is come towards it. Uh, going towards it breaks the protocols instantly. The protocols are broken and the craft will leave. Um, approaching this early breaks the protocols because it's considered too hostile of an act, too assertive, offensive of an act. So that's why um, the jet fighter has the no symbol because it's just not ideal. Here we have our extraterrestrial protocol satellite and it backs up and lowers and then holds position. Now, we're gonna pause for a second here. If this situation was with a wild animal out in the wilderness, let's say in the woods, and uh, this is a deer, and a deer comes out, and the human being sees the deer, and they both freeze for a second. They recognize that they both know each other. If a human does something, if a human follows the protocols, and slowly backs up and descends and comes down to a knee, and I've done this, something really interesting will happen. Most of the time, the deer will realize that you are not a threat. You've done the most passive thing possible, and that this sparks the deer's curiosity. And suddenly, for some reason, most of the time, the deer will make a sound or even a hoof stomp now, what has just happened with that deer is the beginning of the protocols. If this, after you've done this move, if this craft flashes lights at you or makes a positive movement, there's a whole series of, of flow charts here of the protocols of what to do. But if there's any response after you've done this, then bam, communication begins. If you've gotten a flash of light or anything, boom, you're off and running on the flow chart. So um, now this flow chart also works um, in space and uh, we'll get to that in, in a future one. But let's get back to this for a minute. Let's go back to the deer analogy for a moment. With a wild deer, when you meet it out in the wilderness like this and it's now become curious, let's say you back away and you follow the protocols. Over time, you can build a relationship with this wild deer. You can literally have a friendship with this wild deer. And if you are clever enough and compassionate enough, you can even have that deer eating out of your hand. Well, my friends, uh, this is just a very first, very initial overview of the protocols. Much love to you.